So I feel like Facebook is one of those social media platforms where everyone just assumes it's for old people now when actually it's pretty common amongst everyday users. I kind of see it as the default social media in that if you ask everyone to list a social media platform, even if they don't really enjoy using it and it's not their favorite one where they go for their favorite content or the people they really love to follow, then they will still list Facebook and they might well still have a Facebook account. It's weird because it's not the original social media, like there was MySpace, Bebo, all that sort of older stuff stuff from the dawns of the internet, but Facebook was probably the first proper social media. I kind of see it as the thing that has everything, but not necessarily in its best form. You can just always find photos, videos, stories, lives. You can see content from people you know and people you don't, and it's all pretty well mishmashed in there. You just sort of expect to find a bit of everything. They even have an e-commerce platform of their own now. And there's also a bunch of different ways you can interact with the platform. A lot of things like Instagram and TikTok, for example, will require that you choose choose to be either an individual or a creative or a business entity, whereas Facebook allows you to do multiple of those. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to go over the differences between a Facebook profile, a page, a group, and an event. These are things that I see people messing up a lot. This mainly applies to businesses, but it can also be people who just have a different persona or a different brand or any kind of thing they want to do on social media on Facebook, but they keep mixing them up so it gets a bit messy and complicated and everyone's all very confused and then you want to use a certain functions it's like oh god no what do I do it's not here so then they haphazardly make a different version of a different one of these options I'm not going to go into a massive feature list of absolutely everything you can do with all these different mediums of interacting with Facebook but I'm going to give a brief overview of how it's best to utilize it I'm probably going to be giving a lot of examples and to maintain consistency I'm going to talk about it as if you're a martial arts business you know you're an instructor you're in a club and stuff like that I'm also going to use this as an example because I have a lot of personal experience in this area as a martial artist myself I'm a black belt but I have no intention of making it my career. I enjoy competing. I might one day do a seminar, but I'm never going to be running a club unless something dramatically changes for me. So let's start with a profile. You have to have an individual profile made to even access Facebook. They want your email and they want a password. And this is for you as an individual. Some people will choose their club. Let's just say you are hypothetical Taekwondo and they'll put their first name as hypothetical and their last name as Taekwondo and they create a profile for it. Not only is this not allowed and it will likely flag you if it realizes that you aren't an individual individual person because it doesn't want spam, it doesn't want people using it to do scams and stuff, it needs you to be an actual human being. I've not made a new Facebook account in a long long time but I'm pretty sure it requires at least a date of birth and possibly some form of verification that you are actually a human being but I don't think that's necessarily required to make a profile, I just think you need to input email, password and then a few basic details about you as a person. You know, stuff that will be used to treat you in a certain demographic but not stuff that could access your bank accounts. Now your profile is something that you use to act as a solo person. You are an individual, this is you, you might post when you've gone out to the pub, you might be posting your outfit of the day, anything like that. It's a very recent new feature that you can actually access the professional dashboard as an individual profile but this is something that is created for people who have somehow amassed a great following just doing general lifestyle content and therefore their name as a professional is just their actual human name. It's not hypothetical taekwondo, it's me, Georgia Debney. <laughs> I actually do have access to the professional dashboard on my individual profile and pretty much the only benefit for me is it can, like for people who don't know about social media marketing, it recommends what you can do to improve your standing on social media, but I personally already know about all that stuff so I find the recommendations to use every single feature available just a bit annoying because I know what I'm already trying to do but it gives you an option to get tipped basically via a star option so if you see a piece of content that offers stars that means you can send someone money to the value of a star. I haven't personally hit the threshold yet of what you need to do to get adverts on your personal videos and your personal reels and content like that. You can also get ads on live streams and I don't think it's available for written content yet but you can definitely get stars for written content too. I haven't accessed that yet so I couldn't tell you exactly what the threshold is. I only know of one person who's actually hit the threshold and they are literally a multi-millionaire so <laughs> it takes quite a lot of an audience to build it to that level. Now if we go with our example of a martial artist then as an individual using your normal person profile you might be saying oh yeah I'm going to this competition next week can't wait to see you all there or you might say oh god training at class was really exhausting but then this is also the same place where you humanize yourself. Oh, I went to uni today and it was so boring but you could also place what you're having for tea here. You could also put 
what book you're reading. It's just you as a person going about your daily life. Interacting with your actual friends is the intention of your profile. Obviously people will add those they met at business networking events and people like to act like LinkedIn is the professional networking platform, but I think it's all too stilted over there and too like farcical and trying to do pantomime of look how corporate professional I am. So I think that's where the more casual business owners will migrate to things like Facebook if they just want to chat amongst themselves. Now if we move on to a page, you need to have a personal Facebook profile to be able to create a Facebook page. It will then be attached to your profile and you will be an admin. I'm not going to go into all the complexities of associating Meta Business Suite because that's quite complicated and just devise its own possibly an hour long tutorial depending on what you want to do with it. But you will create a page and you will be an admin and then you can add moderators to help you organise the page and those are all other people who you need to connect with their own personal Facebook profile. This is where it gets really awkward for people who are social media managers for businesses that they're not associated with because they can be added as various things like as an editor, moderator, another admin. There's also super admin who's like the god of all Facebook page activity who like supersedes everyone in hierarchy and what data they're able to access in the back end. Keep it real simple, you're just a solo entrepreneur, you've got your taekwondo club in your little village hall and you want to create a page for your club. Hypothetical taekwondo rents out a little venue, you have class twice a week, for some reason it's always Tuesday, Thursday, if you're choosing two days I feel like the entire country just goes do and does martial arts on Tuesday, Thursdays if they don't do it every single day. Now this is your virtual storefront, now you should always have have a website as a business but maybe you don't believe you're at the place where you can justify that yet or you don't feel comfortable outsourcing a web designer to build your website yet. This is where you display your best self for your potential client. I'm not going to go into necessarily all the content you should be producing for your Facebook page. I have a video on that and talking about content pillars and how to actually produce a variety of content to get people through the sales funnel. I'll link it in the little box up there and I'll try and remember to link it in the description below but this is where you need to post stuff like yes what you're doing in class every day and yes you should come at these times and this is the venue and this is how much it costs but this is where you'll be showing off your people who are hauling in the medals or your people who have achieved really amazing things with overcoming their disability through martial arts. This is where you share where people are coming from different clubs to come and visit you and talk about the charity events that you may be running and you're looking for donations. This is where you show your expertise and prove why you're a person who's worthy of teaching a new person martial arts. What do you know about it? Talk about some of the theory of how to make a perfect fist or how to do a kick or how something applies in the real world for a practical application of a very funny looking technique when you're shadow sparring with it. That's where you show off why you're good. This isn't where you just chat about someone left their sparring glove in class today. That is what you would have a group for. Now you can attach a group to a Facebook page. There's a little call to action button. It, last I checked it was in the upper right corner but you know Facebook changes stuff practically every week. So this is where you could link your group and people who follow the page can see that there's a group option and this is really where you do all your community building. So say you've got a grading coming up and you need to remind all your students that you need to wear the white dobok instead of the branded club one because you're going to be visiting another organisation to do it and it's a formal occasion so you would do your formal dobok for your grading, you need the white one. You don't want to post that where all the new clients could see it, not because it's necessarily bad that they know you think about that but because it pushes all your valuable selling content down the feed and how long are they going to be scrolling on it, you don't know. You've got to reel them in as soon as possible so instead of seeing all the stuff you're showing off about, you're showing them your logistics of day to day running your operations. This is why you have your group so you can post, this is the day we need your sizes for your branded hoodies. Class is going to be at a different venue this week because we've got double booked and someone's just shoved us out so we're in an alternate hall. This is where you need to remind people what they bring in their sparring bag if they're going to their first competition. People in your club can post stuff themselves and have other discussions. Now it is an option to let other people post on your page but I would never advise it because that means you don't necessarily control what's going on there. In your group you can allow other people to start their own threads and have their own discussions and your students can be talking amongst themselves and when you're not available to be answering a question about oh what's this pattern mean then someone who is a higher belt may see it on their feed as they're part of the group and then they can share that information on your behalf and it creates a sense of community within your club and when a new person joins you can say to them if you want to ask anything while we're not in class this week or maybe you're away on holiday so you need to cancel class for a week then you can say if you have any questions go post it in the group and I'm sure someone else would be more than delighted to tell you the answer and that is how you can sort of offload some of the work involved 
involved in running your club as well and running your business but this creates a sense of camaraderie between people who are very different demographic spaces and may not know each other otherwise. Now we're gonna get to events which is something I have a personal vendetta against when it comes to martial artists promoting on Facebook because it's almost an in joke we just know at this point that the better an instructor you are and a more seasoned master then the worse you are at marketing yourself. <laughs> I'm there to like do my hobby and have fun so I don't necessarily want to give out free knowledge to people when they should be paying me for it. It's sort of like a walking line of showing what I'm good at doing and promoting what I do but then also I'm not here to work. So events. <laughs> Any of the things I've talked about so far can create an event page. So your profile, your page and a group can all have events. If you create an event as an individual on your profile it will be visible on your profile and you can link it from your profile and you can post about it on your profile but that's sort of the only place it really lives and then you have to share it amongst your friends and the people who follow your profile individually. If you post it on a page then it's a lot more public. It will appear on events near you if you go into your calendar tab. It will appear on the feeds of people who follow you. It will appear on the feeds of people who are looking at your stories. If you share it on your story it'll appear appear in their story section and that also is an option for if the event you're running maybe it's not a competition although it often is for martial artists maybe if the event you're running is a beginner's class then you can promote it to the people who are looking at your page wondering maybe I should try that I really need to get fit now or if it's a public demo for example then maybe the local news spot it because they're crawling around looking for something to talk about this week if you create an event within a group then that's a bit more private because depending on the privacy settings of your group only the people who are a member of the group may be able to see it. So if it's something like, oh, we've got a grading coming up this week and this is the running order, then that's an event that you would probably place in a group. Now, the big one with martial artists specifically, you will have to adapt the metaphor for your industry here, but for martial artists specifically, it's normally about competitions and it's infuriating because an event page, what ends up happening with a lot of these instructors who are running competitions and just think, oh, I must tell people about this. How will I get the word out instead of just going around knocking on everyone's doors? Oh, I'll make an event page. They may make an event page in the wrong place for a start, but let's assume they make an event attached to a page of their organization. I would always recommend if you're trying to do something like this. So your individual profile is you as a person, your page is you as a business, your group is all the people in your community are in equal standing. So I think if you're running a competition it would be most advisable to create an event as your page because then you can promote it as a business, you can show what you're doing to potential new customers, to people who already follow you because it's not just for new people, it's for people who, who are part of your club as well but it's you speaking to them as a to with them and letting them know information and imparting wisdom. Maybe you're even not a martial arts club but you're actually a martial arts governing body and you want to tell the people who are members of your organization stuff without it being private then you post it on your page. So what a lot of people end up doing for their competitions is they will create a graphic, it will be a poster, a poster that probably never actually gets printed out and it will only appear on the banner image of the event page. So they've created a portrait orientation poster and they want to put it on a landscape narrow orientation banner photo and it will be the venue, the dates, the time doors open, maybe how much tickets cost and then some pictures of people kicking each other in a sparring match and maybe someone doing a pattern. That's standard template for what this graphic looks like and because of how Facebook adapts the portrait image to fit into this landscape space, at best you might get lucky to see some of the name of the competition and someone's foot in the actual banner and you have to click on the image to get any real information about it. Then it, the information of the page, the metadata, where the, you're supposed to tell people about the event you're hosting is almost entirely left empty. I, on, more often than not, it's always empty and they may link back to the same event page. They will copy paste the URL and they will link it into the information box and say, this is the event page, here you go. So you're just self-linking back to a poster image and it hurts me deeply. I'm not calling out any individual person, I'm calling out a lot of you. Stop doing that. <laughs> um, what you should be doing with your event page to promote your Taekwondo and other martial arts competitions is you need to create, yes, create a banner image, but it should probably just be like the title of your competition, possibly where it's going to be and the price of entry, maybe the divisions that are in it. But don't do all these things. Don't try and shove it all into one space 
just choose a couple of them, do what works for your graphic and what you want to prioritise telling people. In the banner image, I would advise getting a really nice photo in there with just the name of the competition, to be honest. Then, when people see the image and go, oh, I wonder what that's about, they can investigate the event page, and then you go into the information description box, like the bio, the description, whatever you want to call it, there is a box where you put information for people, and that is where you should link to where they can buy tickets, first and foremost, put the pricing information, put the division information. Most people will run their competition through a third party platform like kiap.com or sport data although that one's awful to navigate or there's a third one that I'm forgetting right now but it's always like the same free and they will take payments through those and arrange the divisions through those and then you can link that back to the event page on Facebook but you should still put the lists of what divisions are available at the very least what events you're running because it's standard that every martial arts competition will do patterns if they have it which most of them do and sparring but some of them also do things like special techniques destruction, speed kicking, people are inventing new divisions, maybe you've got weapons divisions, people don't know that. You can't incentivize them to go click on the extra thing to go buy a ticket if you've even given them a way of buying a ticket. You can't incentivize them to do that without putting the information on the event page that they've already seen. If this is someone's first competition they have absolutely no hope, they don't have any chance of knowing what the tropes are meant to be, so give them the information and supply in every possible place where it makes sense. Don't just go, here's an image, have at it, turn up on the day and hope you can buy a ticket at the door. Like, it just doesn't happen like that. You want to be able to plan your divisions in advance? Let people have options on letting you know they're gonna be there. <laughs> and then, in the run-up to the competition, obviously you can post this content in multiple places, but you should be posting like, oh, we're booking the venue today, or we've set up this venue, we've got people from across the planet coming to our competition. Make sure you don't miss out, you have these many days to buy tickets, Oh, it's the last warning, make sure you're buying your tickets. Look at these beautiful medals we've had produced. Come win them at our amazing competition. Prove your metal, we are the best, you can be a badass. Post all that stuff in the event page. And then also post it on your page as a business. And then also share those posts via your personal profile and put a little comment going, oh my God, guys, I can't wait to see you. Who, ne who still needs to know what's going on? What do you need from me as your individual self on your profile? Share it everywhere. But the event page itself needs to have the information. So yeah. That, that's my little rant on that one. Hopefully this has been helpful to you, giving you an idea of how to organise yourself. If you do need to know actual features that are available for each one of these different options, then Facebook does provide the documentation, you just have to search for it a little bit, or maybe I'll do another tutorial in the future where you can follow along. Thank you for watching, have a nice day, make sure you subscribe. <laughs>